messy version up there on the screen. So if any of you would like to just follow along up there, you certainly can. Amen. We are continuing our efforts to uh, make sure that we are proclaiming the Word of God and giving all of us a context and a framework to understand why we engage in this very important work. How many of you know that the Scripture says that uh, uh, Jesus came, that we may have life and have it what? Abundant life. life. How many of you know that uh, Jesus said that if the Son has set you free, you are free. free indeed. That it is not the desire of God for any of us to live in bondage, for any of us to live uh, in shame. That God wants us to indeed live free. And it's also important for us to appreciate that all the work that we are doing in this regard is not out of the kindness of our hearts. That if you're a follower of Jesus, we are required to love justice. We are required to make sure that justice is being lived out and made concrete in the world. And we aren't just doing this because uh, we're just nice, great people. That we are, have a, a, a moral exceptionalism at work in our lives. Uh, many people say uh, things like, well, you know, God knows my heart. And God knows what, uh, you know, I, how, how, how I, I have these, these agreements and things with God. And he, he, he's the only one that can judge me. And I agree with people, God does know your heart. He knows your heart is, is evil and deceitful and wicked. Amen. That's the word of God. That's not me. Amen. That's what he said. He described our hearts that way. That's why we all need to save you. Somebody say amen. Give me a high five and tell me that's why God saved me. Because I was full of sin and deceitfully wicked. All right. Then and out, now, now. So, 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 so the truth of the matter is, we are all in need of a Savior. And even when you are unaware that you need a Savior, aren't you glad God still saved you? Amen. Yes. Anybody been in a situation where you know that just had to be God? Amen. You, you, you weren't even asking for God to hook you up and you got hooked up in your house. Uh -huh. You stayed up all night partying and you had that final and you didn't. Plunking. Somebody say, God, help me out. Uh -huh. You gave your heart to that woman and she broke it and you were still able to talk straight. Somebody say, God, help me out. I wish I had a church today. Amen. Amen. You made a lot of mistakes, but you're still here. Give it every high five and tell them, God, help me out. So, so, the question for us at this moment then is, if God desires for us to live free, what does that mean and how can we make sure that we are a part of God's plan and activity in the world? Well, this passage is a very important passage for us to think and talk about uh, because we are all going through this consecration time and this consecration season. And this passage, I think, helps us to have a little bit of an understanding around how our consecration links up with the work of being free. The work of living free. Let's read what the word of God says. Isaiah chapter 58, verse number 1, it says, Shout, a full-throated shout, hold nothing back, a trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives, face my family Jacob with their sins. For they're busy, busy, busy at worship, and they love studying all about me. Good old church folk, amen, right? That's, that's church folk, right? <laughs> to all appearances, they're a nation of right living people, law abiding, God honoring. They ask me what's the right thing to do and love having me on their side. But they also complain. Why do we fast and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time, you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The kind of fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground. That's, that, you, know, you know, God telling you that your prayers won't get off the ground. Yeah. Man, that, 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 that's a serious, uh, a serious warning. Do you think this is the kind of fast day I'm after? A day to show off humility? To put on a pious, long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? 
a fast that I thought was light. This is the kind of fast I'm after, verse number six, to break the chains of injustice, get rid of exploitation in the workplace, free the oppressed, cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering ill clad, being available to your own families. Do this and the lights will turn on and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way and the God of glory will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help and I'll say, here I am. If you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins. If you are generous with the hungry, start giving yourself to the down and out. Your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadow lies will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. Listen to these last couple verses. I just find it to be so powerful. I'll give you a life, a full life, in the emptiest of places. Firm muscles, strong bones. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use old rubble of past lives to build the new. Rebuild the foundation from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything. Restore old ruins. Rebuild and renovate. Make the community livable again. The word of God for us, the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. So, I want to speak for the next few moments simply from the topic... Fast for life. Fast for life. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God that is read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our heart so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing. That makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me and the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Fast for life. Now tomorrow, Dr. King's birthday will be celebrated all across the country. This is uh, MLK weekend. And uh, most people will take Dr. King's holiday and celebrate the dream he had of social and economic and racial inclusion. They'll point to his I Have a Dream speech and make every effort to minimize Dr. King's work in life to a march and a speech. They'll point to his I Have a Dream speech and, and, and recite all these words that I have a dream when my children will be judged by the content of the character and not the color of their skin. And the government all across the world or all across the country have, have declared this weekend to be Martin Luther King weekend. But they will not acknowledge that in many states across the country, if Dr. King were alive today, he could not even vote because of him going to jail. We'll celebrate Dr. King and, and, and talk about how he was just this prophet of love, but many folks would really marginalize Dr. King if he were alive today because he would still be talking about the problems of our country, militarism, materialism and racism. Yeah. People will celebrate the legacy of Dr. King uh, because that's what we do. We like to take what we like about people and accentuate and amplify it and the things we don't like, we pretty much will act like they never said that challenging thing to us. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. How many know Dr. King's life is more than a few speeches and marches? Amen. But he made his life an expression of service to God. And he did not take any days off. He spent years in preparation, years in study, years in planning, years in action and preaching and teaching, forgiving, challenging, listening, serving, praying, fasting, living not violently. Dr. King was a wonderful example of what a life of faith and consecration can do to change everything you when you really embody it. When I talk about fast for life, I'm not talking about you fasting for your life. 
or another's life. I'm talking about what does it mean for you to fast for the rest of your life? I don't know, some of y'all are like, what? <laughs> all right, Pastor, now I'm doing this no peace, no sweet thing, all right? <laughs> Uh, you, you, you tricked me, right? You told me it was only for, uh, for a month. Now you're talking about the rest of my life? No, 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 no. Think, think a little deeper. Praise God. Get, get, get all the, the, the lot of you meat just hopped up in your head. You're like, oh my goodness. Like, what was going on? Mike got a new revelation that don't seem like it's from God. Praise God. <laughs>
they been to prison. It's 10% almost of the, the voting population of the state. So we did a sign in March and we went into the office and we spent all that time and the security was trying to throw us out the building, all 120 of us preachers and, and formerly incarcerated folks. It was a beautiful sight. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But we came back home and we worked all the way up until 9 o'clock. And then we were up the next morning at 7 o'clock. I'm talking about an intense boot camp. But we came out of the boot camp and we had all committed collectively to reaching almost 2,800 people when we get back home to train them on the same tactics through our faith. Uh, so we can all begin to engage these systems of incarceration. Yes. It was intense, but we all came out more powerful. Oh, wow. Could it be that this consecration that we are engaging in is our spiritual boot camp for 2014? Yeah. That God realizes there's some things that you're going to encounter this year that you need to spend a month preparing yourself for. That you saying no to a state is going to help you say no to that brother or that sister later on in the year that will give you more than a heartburn. Somebody say amen. <laughs> you saying no to that sweet will give you the spiritual power to be able to say no next week or next month when uh, unforgiveness begins to bubble up in your spirit and, and cause you to walk around bitter and not better. You know, that, that this is an opportunity for you and I to, to build up the spiritual parts of our lives that otherwise would remain underdeveloped. When we talk about consecrated, it allows you and I to be a people who can indeed live free. And how many of you know that living free is more than you just being outside of a jail cell? But living free is you being able to choose the right thing every time. Yeah. And I want you to know, child of God, that God is looking for some folk, particularly people who claim to follow Jesus, to live free. Live free from addiction. Live free from abuse. Live free from unforgiveness. Live free from death. And live free from all of the different social ills and challenges, depression and sin and dehumanization. Live free. And if you and I can live free, then we create the space for God to get the glory out of our life. Give me that for a quick high five and tell them live free, live free, live free, live free, live free. And this is why the scripture today is so helpful. Because many of us think that if I fast for a day, or I fast for a week, or I fast for a month, then that's all that I need to do. No, understand, fasting for life means that you have set your whole life apart to God. And God, I'm going to set you up in my life on the throne of my heart. You're not just going to be my Savior, but you're going to be my Lord. Yes. Uh, how many know the difference between being uh, God being your Savior and God being your Lord? Yes. God being your Savior means God always gets you out of the mess you in. But God being your Lord means that He can tell you no before you get in that mess. And you'll listen to what God is saying. So what are some concrete ways that we can allow the power of God to enable us to fast for life? Well, we have three things that we're lifting up, and I find this to be very powerfully expressed in our passage today. Everybody say, preach, preach pray, pray, act. act. Say it again, preach, preach pray, pray, and act. act. The first thing that we see even up on the screen is that if you're going to fast for life, you must embrace the call of God for you to preach. I know some of you are like, preach? That's your job, Pastor. <laughs> well, it's not only my job to preach, because how many of you know preaching is not just about standing up here on the stage behind the pulpit proclaiming the word of God. Yeah. But God wants you to preach, to share the goodness of the Lord in your life in a bold way out loud for everyone see and hear. The text says in the beginning to shout. Shout aloud. I mean trumpet like shouts. Some of us, our lives, not just our voices, but our lives, could make a trumpet sound if we blew in it with all the wind we got. Because we have not yet fasted for life. We fast one day a week. 
come to church on Sunday for two hours. Not even two hours, an hour and a half. Then we get to be two hours. Well, we get to finish it in and like, all right, pastor. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. But can you imagine what would it look like if every day you understood your life to be about God's business and God's work? That your life was a bold proclamation of the word of God. Your life caused you to speak out boldly so everyone around you could know and hear what God is doing in the world. That God wants people to appreciate that your voice has been given to you as a gift to change the world. Now, how many of you know that sometimes our voice can easily get buried by a lot of drama and mess? Yeah. Some people have, have, have lost their voice, have never even recovered their voice, so they don't speak out. And they live their life following what everyone else, the world, tells them to do. But how many of you know when you find your voice in God, it don't matter what other people say about you, because I know what God says. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah could have easily just went back home and been like, well, you know, I tried God, but, but, but you know, uh, they didn't like me. But no, Jeremiah realized because he heard the word of God, and he heard the voice of God, and God told him, I'm going to put my word in your mouth. Jeremiah found his voice. And in finding his voice, he was able to boldly proclaim the word of God to everyone who needed to hear it. And I want you to realize, child of God, that part of what you and I need to do is find our voice. Why? Because there's a special message that God has placed in your mouth. We saw Brother Clarence, we saw uh, uh, Brother Gary, uh, we, 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 we see you, many of you have a special word that God has placed in your mouth to boldly proclaim, to live out loud, to be the amplifier of God's work and will in the world. And guess what? If you don't preach, someone won't hear. God would have you to preach. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, I see you, preach, I see you, preach, I see you, preach, I see you, preach. See you, preach. The, the, the second thing that the scripture tells us to do uh, is that we must pray. Everybody say pray. Pray. You and I must engage in spiritual practices that thrust us into a process of transformation. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean you walk up down the street. Lord, I want to thank you for waking me up this morning and calling me to be uh, alive today. Hey, how you doing? God bless you. Thank you very much. And I, I want to appreciate that you uh, brought me into my job and thank you for my job. And you walk through your office and, and all you're doing is praying. You're supposed to be working, but all you're doing is praying. That's not what Pastor Mike's talking about. <laughs> so don't try that tomorrow. Don't go to your job and be like, Pastor Mike uh, told me that I was praying without ceasing. That's why I'm praying. Uh, no, 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 because when they fire you, I won't have anything for you. <laughs> Somebody say amen, right? How many of the prayer is communication with God? Prayer means that you have the ability to have a mindset that my whole life is prayer. That I am communicating with God in my heart. Uh, first, uh, Samuel chapter number one says that I will meditate on the law, on the word of God, day and night. Who, what are you meditating on? Hmm. What are the things and the thoughts that run through your mind? Lord, help me today. When no one else is around, uh, this consecration, this fast for life should be challenging you and I for the rest of our lives. I'm going to make sure I practice the prayer, the focus, the meditation of God. One of the, 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 the old monks, uh, Brother Bernard, he, he talked about practicing the presence of God. Brother Lawrence, I'm sorry. Practicing the presence of God. He would just walk. As he walked, he would see the trees and he would see the presence of God in the trees. He would see the presence of God in other people. And it kept him from harboring uh, hatred and malice in his heart. Why? Because even the people he did not like, he saw the presence of God in them. I want you to know, child of God, that God needs you and I to be people who can see the presence of God in one another. In the scripture, the text says that on your fast day, you are still just as mean as you was when you wasn't fast. On your fast day, you swing a mighty fist. You oppress your workers. You hide your face from your family. How can you be fasting to get closer to God, but yet you draw further away from people? That is not the fast that God says he's looking 
looking for. God says it. I want you to be in such a mindset of spiritual, faithful adherence to my word. Even the folk you hate when you fasting, you find love in your heart for them. Yeah. Even the folk that get on your nerves when you fasting, yeah. you're finding a whole nother reservoir of being able to overextend the love of God to them. How do you build up these spiritual prayers and what are the kind of prayers I'm talking about? Clean some of those, those slides. Prayer! You ought to be praying regularly. What's another one that comes up? Study. Some of you uh, that, that haven't opened up your Bible, amen, in such a long time that the pages stick together. <laughs> you study everything else but the Word of God. Scripture memorization. Amen. Some of us know more, more, more raps to Jay-Z a little way. I mean, I say uh, 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 videos and, 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 and songs Relationships. Oh, how I love 
says, I'll give you a full life in the emptiest of places. How many have some empty places in your life where you need God to make you full again? Amen. God said, if you set yourself apart and do something differently, engage in these practices, I'll start to change some things around. <clears throat> and, and then the last part he says is you'll be known as those who can fix anything. This is the legacy of the child of God. That you can be in any circumstance, your marriage, your community, your church, your family, your finances, your own emotions. God says if you fast for life, anything can get fixed. Child of God, we want to live free. We want our communities to live free. And all of us who are engaged in this work, we pray a lot. Even some of you that are just got your own little challenges or big challenges, your own little problems or big problems, we always pray for God to change other people. Ain't that right? God changed my boss. <laughs> change that professor. <laughs> change, change my husband. Change my wife. Change my children. But whenever I ask God to change, Everyone else, God used the response to say, Hey, Brad, I'm going to change you. Because if I change you, you have the power to change the world. I want you and I to be people who aren't just fasting for a day, consecrating for a month, but fasting for the rest of our lives. Embodying the spiritual practices and power that can change us who we are today to who God would have us to be. Stand with me, everyone, as people.